Because it's a pan, right? Yes, sir. Do you know how many medium Pizza Hut pizzas this would be? About 46, 50 pizzas. Oh my God. They say everything is bigger in Texas. And this time, they're absolutely right. Today, I'm on a mission to find three completely different pizza experiences you've never seen before. Here, we don't have a menu. We bring all the food we have to your table. I love that. From super affordable, this giant cheese pizza, $5.75, to shockingly expensive. This pizza, eight feet wide, how expensive is this one? This is $800. Feeds 150 people. In the end, I'll tell you which pizza pie gave me the most bang for my buck. Today, our video is all about pizza. We're gonna try three different pizzas at three different amounts of money. They're all gonna be made out of different stuff. At the end of the day, we're gonna see which pizza gave us the most bang for our buck. Sorry, there was just a big reverb effect. Did uh -huh. you feel it? Yes, like the echo? Yeah. I heard it. My eating partner today, Janie Lamb, a food enthusiast born in California. Recently, she finished 43rd on Master Chef. What is the most expensive pizza you've ever eaten? $30. That's it? Yeah. Sorry, I'm very out of touch. I'm extremely wealthy. Today, we're gonna eat a pizza that costs $800. What is it gonna do, magic tricks in my mouth? I don't know either. We have a lot in front of us. We have three okay. pizzas to try. You ready? Let's go. Oh, we're far from any pizza right now. Where are we? In the middle of nowhere. We're gonna call an Uber. Do we even have service? My phone's out of batteries. Okay, let's walk to a payphone. Okay, but how are we gonna get an Uber with a payphone? Um, <laughs> oh, sh I didn't even think about that. <laughs> Pizza, a simple combination of dough and cheese that can be found in pretty much any country. Its ubiquity means it's hard to come up with a concept folks haven't seen before. Enter Serious Pizza. Where most pizzas finish within 18 inches, they're large. That's where we start. So we have a large, an extra large, and a seriously large. My producers told me that before we got here, and I couldn't internalize it and comprehend it. I was like, is that the size of a child? We got here, and I saw it, and they're huge. And this isn't even the biggest one behind me right now. Correct. Imran Sheikh is a co-founder and CEO of Milkshake Concepts, a hospitality group that acquired Serious Pizza when they saw just how popular this concept was. Your accent sounds vaguely not Texan. I'm born and raised in London. How different is London and Dallas? Worlds apart. The first thing that everyone told me when I got to Texas was Southern hospitality, and that's so true. Yeah. And I can tell you now, I can't ever see myself leaving. I love it here, I love to do business here. People are super open to new ideas, new concepts, mm. uh, and we love creating concepts. The idea around Serious Pizza is actually the opposite of Serious. Let's have fun with this. People should be allowed to put what they want on their pizza. If you want beef with pineapple or whatever else, then that's up to you. You heard that right. Giant, customizable pizzas. But what if you can't personally take down 5,000 calories in one sitting? No worries. Here you can order customized pizza by the slice. I believe these slices are cut from the 30-inch pizza. That's exactly right. But how does that work? What the team does is they prep the base so that they have a canvas from which to work. Batches of dough are made from flour, salt, water, and olive oil. They're portioned out, then put in the fridge to rest before the perfect 30 inches is impressively hand-tossed. That's not easy to do. Most 30-inch pizzas are covered with pizza sauce, shredded mozzarella cheese, and toppings of your own choosing before being sent off to get baked. For pizza by the slice, they partially cook the dough and cut it up. This is your canvas, and it can become whatever you dream. Top it with meat, veggies, sauce. They even have truffle oil. All toppings are a buck each. Location one, pizza one, it's all right here. For $5.75, you get this giant cheese pizza. This is like the iPhone that has no memory. Mmm. I feel like I'm being selfish now. Do you want to bite from there? It's delicious. I mean, it's a super thin New York style crust. I like it when the cheese like pulls. The base bottle, pretty good. But I'm looking for something with a little bit more ram. I got pepperoni and jalapenos. So how much would that cost? $7. $7.75. <laughs> Over here, what have I done? I put seven toppings on here. Pepperoni, bacon, shaved ribeye, black olives, fresh mushrooms, green peppers, and white truffle oil. You gotta be smart when you come here, when you order, and I did not do the smart part. Who is coming here to order vegetables? <laughs> that was my producer's idea of the bell pepper. Oh, it'll be colorful. Mm. Mm. I'm not 
I'm normally a crust person, but this crust is really good. Thin and not super doughy. I'm loving the mushrooms. Pepperoni's delicious. They've got shaved ribeye. Guys, this ribeye woke up early this morning. It's shaved. It's looking good. It's on my pizza. Is that what they mean by shaved? <laughs> no. Thinly sliced. Hey, you might not be good at math, but you're good at words. <laughs> this is just our first location. It's a great start, but we got a lot more to see. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Our second location, DeLuca El Gaucho Pizza, a Brazilian restaurant serving pizza Rudizio style. Have you ever been to a pizza buffet? But this is not buffet. You cannot use this word here. We fire anyone that uses the word buffet here. Oh no, I can't work here no, anymore. No. <laughs> You're fired. Meet the owner, Ivandro. He comes from Brazil originally, but for 20 years, he's been delighting Dallas diners with Brazilian culinary experiences. It's a completely different game here. It's a very upscale pizzeria. How do you communicate the idea that you can can eat all you want to eat. It continues dining. Oh. Thank you. Pay one flat price and eat until your heart and your stomach are content. It's like Brazilian barbecue, but instead of meat, here they keep bringing out pizza. In Brazil, do you have anything like this? Oh yeah, that's from Brazil. That's the way they do there. You have this. You bring the pizza and this, give me some time. I want to rest a little bit. Oh, so that's normal. Oh yes. I didn't know somebody here just made that up and they're yeah, like, it's no, no, Brazilian. No. What is the price tag? So when he comes in the door, they pay how much for this experience? $24. It seems like an excellent deal. I'm curious, how do you keep the pizza warm? Well, we don't keep it warm. We bake and we serve it. Here, everything is made fresh. There are over 100 guests, but just one oven. So speed is of the essence. Pizzas here are about 13 inches, but the dough, the dough is fermented for 36 hours or longer to create a better tasting pizza that they say is easier to digest. The cheese, they use their in-house Fior di Latte mozzarella made fresh daily. With a combination of sauces and other toppings, in total, they offer a menu of 20 pizzas. We got 15 savory ones and five uh, dessert pizzas. Let's go. I'm ready for some pizza. I don't think there's like a computer chip. I think someone just sees it. Let's pretend to be sophisticated. Okay. Oh, we're enjoying our drinks. We're All having right. small talk. We don't even care if we get pizza Cheers. soon. Oh, my man. Have lamb pizza? We'll take it. First up, Turkish lamb pizza. I better take two. Uh oh, I bet everyone does this with their first dose of pizza. On top of the dough place mozzarella, sauteed minced lamb meat, sumac onions, primavera sauce, olive oil, and parsley. It's so flavorful. Oh, it's a little spicy too. I love all the spices and I get all of the flavors. So like the onion, the lamb, everything just goes well together. The dough is so thin and flaky, very delicate. So you can eat a lot. Oh, oh hey, garlic it just keeps coming. Yes. Picana is a popular Brazilian cut of beef. It's minced, sauteed and dropped on the pizza along with fresh mozzarella, garlic, olive oil and fresh herbs. Mm. I love garlic. The beef is super flavorful. What I love is that you're never going to get pizza really fresher than this. Especially like if you got a whole pie, it's gonna cool down at the table. Here, it comes out the oven, they cut it up, they bring it to you, and it's maybe a minute old by the time you get it. Yeah. Nice, another pizza. Hey. Pizza three, mozzarella suppressato salami, and a lot of it. Bake and finish it with drizzles of hot honey. It's a fun combination. Something a little oily, salty, fatty, with something sweet. Mm. Oh, oh, it's so hot. The honey really balances the spiciness of the Soprasata? Are you secretly Brazilian? Maybe. It's such a satisfying crunch every time I bite into it. Are you ready for dessert? Mm -hmm. Boom. Now we wait. Prepare to go to mouth heaven. Fresh mozzarella and whipped mascarpone. After baking, add caramel dolce de leche and finish with toasted coconut. Definitely smell the coconut. Is this pizza? Or did a dessert angel just wrap her arms around my waist and pull me close? It's so delicious. It's super creamy and the texture of the coconut, it just works really well. I think we gotta turn this and we gotta tap out for now. From here, we have one more location to go, a pizza bigger than you've ever seen before, I swear. What's on this pizza? Let's go find out right now. For our final pan-busting pizza, we're heading 300 miles south of Dallas. No restaurant, no waiting customers. We are literally in the middle of nowhere, in a place where size does matter. Meet Kurt, 
owner of Dirt Road Cookers. This is wild. Behind you is your pizza trailer. Yes. You have to cart that around every time you cook a pizza. Whenever someone wants it. Janie, have you ever had a pizza that's eight feet wide? No. <laughs> Kurt's been organizing and catering large-scale eating events, cooking up hundreds of gigantic pizzas for the last 11 years. A giant pizza feeds how many people? 150 people. With a team of eight and his mobile wood-fired pizza oven. How many iterations have you gone through, though? This is my second pitch. Second. And how many more will there be? I hope this one lasts 20 years. Okay. That's good. the goal. Yeah, I mean, it's a tank. It's just made out of steel. How much does that weigh? 5,000 pounds. That's real big. There is no how-to guide when it comes to baking an eight-foot pizza. Kurt and his crew have dared to dream big. To make sure the size was going to handle it, I had tested on the small pits. So my small pits, it had a firebox on one side and pushed, and I could tell the heat kind of went away as it got into the pit. So I knew as soon as I got to eight foot, I was going to run out of heat. So I knew I had to put a firebox on both sides. That's kind of the way I designed it, just one piece at a time. It all started with an idea, then the execution. Iterations of blueprints, designs, and best guesses. So how does he put the pizza in the oven? Well, with the pizza tray, of course, an eight-foot wide pizza tray. This is my third design. This one weighs 100 pounds. Took about a year to draw the diagram for it. And to a, get year? a year? A year. It's a circle. I know. I'm sorry, I don't want it. Um, I... <laughs> is there something I'm missing? So no, it's a circle down there, too. So step one, it's already taking place. I saw you guys clean this off very thoroughly. You put oil all over it and then some flour so it doesn't stick. From here, the dough. I'm guessing it's not hand tossed. 40 pounds of dough is needed to make the pizza crust. Five dough balls are spread out, then stretched toward the center of the tray, then pinched to connect together as one whole pizza crust. I have done one pizza on one dough ball. The rolling pin was 300 pounds. <laughs> All my friends and family told this. me to throw that thing away. Right, because they're the ones helping you. Now for the toppings. On the menu today, five pizzas in one. Sausage, brisket, pepperoni, margarita, and an apple pie dessert pizza. First, the sauce. Tomato sauce is spread over part of the pizza. Then a drizzle of olive oil for the margarita pizza. And finally, a cream cheese base with egg and sugar for the dessert pizza. Next, top it with sliced apple and brown sugar. The rest gets an even coating of mozzarella cheese. How many pounds of cheese are on here? 30 pounds of cheese. Oh, wow. That's a lot of cheese. <laughs> Toppings are going on now. They're flinging the pepperonis. There's tomato. The dessert pizza looks delicious. And then brisket. We're in Texas. Of course, we have to have brisket. Finally, top it with three pounds of pepperoni, six pounds of sausage, and eight pounds of brisket. So everything's on here. Pounds and pounds of food, dough, sauce, cheese, and toppings. I'm guessing the easy part's done, right? Yes. We have to get it in that oven. The oven's very hot, and it looks kind of like a thin tray that has to be slid in there, like a narrow entry point. And you think this is about 200 pounds? This is about 200 pounds, yeah. That's not bad. We're all big no. boys, right? We all eat brisket daily. All right, let's lift it up. Oh, that's not bad at all. All right, so. <laughs> Slide it on the edge. And then it just goes in like a track. Keep pushing in. That's all the way in? That's all the way in. One, two, three. All right, they're going to shut it officially, closing the oven gently. The pizza's inside. And the fan is back on. How long is that going to take to cook? About 30 minutes. So this pit is designed to cook evenly. Every once in a while, we have a hot spot. But every 8 to 10 minutes, we'll spin about 90 degrees, check it. And that way, if there is a hot spot, it's moved over a little bit, and we could cook uh, another part of the pizza a little bit faster. All right, do you ever open it after 30 minutes, and you're surprised, and you have a black pizza? In 2013, Kurt and his team broke the record for the world's largest commercially available pizza. But getting started was anything but easy. It started when um, my dad and I had to get together and we had to do something to get stuff off our chest. My grandpa passing away. And we built barbecue pits to cook briskets on. And part of the feature was a tray that slid out, kind of like this pit does. We were able to cook pizzas on there eventually for our volleyball nights every Sunday. And it turned into a thing and people loved it and we just need to go bigger and bigger. How did you refine the pizza making process? Were you good at it in the beginning? 
No, I was not good at all. Okay. I actually had other people come in to help make the pizza and I would just work on the fire. About 2013, I had eight people helping me on my pizzas. We refined on how to make this pizza and the time frame and everything else. And now if I needed to, I could cook a pizza by myself mm. because people are interested in what I'm doing. They're willing to come help out to get involved. Free work. Exactly. <laughs> Free labor. One, two, three. All right, the pizza is done. Everyone's getting their tools so we can take it out. You've had pizza before when it comes out of the oven, you hear a little bit of cheese sizzling. I mean, this is like a stadium of cheese screaming and sizzling inside of here. Guys, well ready? Let's do it. All right, All right. I guess take it out the so same way we put it I'm in. I'm gonna pull it to about here. Okay. And you're gonna help pull it straight out. I'll lift it on the backside. Okay. Ooh, this is hot now. Let's go. Oh yeah, I'm feeling that through the gloves. There we go. Whoa. Look at this, this is a beauty. Wow, we've got dessert pizza, pepperoni. It's still bubbling up. Oh yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. I can't wait to start cutting this up and get into it. We tried two pizzas already. This is obviously the most expensive of the day. This pizza, eight feet wide, looks absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. And you've got this right here. Yeah. What is going on? It's our pizza slicer. That's how we're gonna cut it. This is the biggest pizza slicer I've well, ever seen. Well, it's the biggest pizzas you've ever seen too. Wow, it's almost like you hold it like a weed whacker, right? Yeah. Something like this? Yeah. And then you just have at it? Have at it. Do you slice this like a normal pizza? No, I slice them into squares. That makes sense. So a bunch of lines this way and this way. Like That's a grid. it. I would love if you would cut it for us. Janie will. All right, let's do it. Yes? I messed up the line. Yeah. Look at it, now it's going back differently. How do you feel seeing your pizza just completely torn apart? It's tearing me apart a little bit, but we're good. All right, can I try? There we go. Looks good. Oh, the sound coming from here is awesome. Crunchy bread, cheese. I'm tired. A lot of work into that? Yeah. I'm usually, I do more eating on the show. Oh, okay. Let me see what I can do. Okay, this whole section is cut already. <laughs> this is a great show. This one is the margarita. Oh, it's real doughy, huh? You a slicer? Oh, <laughs> yes, you have a gun slicer. We're in Texas. Cheers. Mm. That's unbelievable. I love that the crust is like crunchy. Yeah, it's kind of like a very doughy, almost biscuity breading on the pizza. It's a thick crust right, right where you got it. Mm. You have any spices on here? Uh, we have basil, oil, tomato, and cheese, and that's it. It's really good. We still have four more slices to eat. I know there's so much pizza left, but I think we can take it all down between the three of us. What do you think? I am hungry, actually. Okay, good. Oh, no. So we've got pepperoni here. I'll just grab a edge piece. I found one right in the middle that I like. Oh, yes. Mm. Wow. I just got whisked away. For a second, I was like, I'm not even in a restaurant. I feel like I'm in some field in Texas. That's you how good are it was. In a field in Texas. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so interesting. There's a slight variation on the crust thickness throughout. So this crust is a little thinner than our last piece. So much cheese. And then just all the oils from the pepperoni has spilled over the whole pizza. So good. I have the edge piece, so it's Right, like it's going to be a lot more crispy. crunchy, right? Mm -hmm. We're in Texas. We absolutely have to try brisket. Oh, look at this. The brisket's popping off. Let's try just the brisket. Mmm, so smoky. So smoky and yummy. This is remarkably delicious. I think this one's my favorite so far. You know what I like to do? I like to fold mine over like a little bit of a taco, and then I just hit it from the side. Oh. That's very nice. Alas, this is the dessert pizza, and I like it because it's a balanced meal. You could have a little bit of appetizer pizza, main course pizza, and dessert pizza to kind of round it off so you don't feel full and sluggish and kind of like you've overdone it. Mm -hmm. It looks like we've got apples on here, and I believe instead of mozzarella cheese, they've used a cream cheese. Mutual yeah. smell, ready? <sighs> it's appley, it's full of cinnamon. Let's try it out. That's a good dessert pizza. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always feel like pizza at all. It's amazing that it's the same dough. It's almost just like a little delicious pastry. Yeah, like a toner boy, like apple Danish. Like an apple Danish. Yeah. I think there's a perfect blend of sweet sugar, cream cheese, and apples that together just feels like a delicious dessert. The part that's surprising to me is that they can make it at this big of a scale and actually make it all delicious. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to expect. I mean, sometimes you see people try to make a 20 pound hamburger and the patty's that thick and you're like, there's no way that's good. But here, all they've done is spread it out. Okay, they didn't make everything thicker. They've 
kept all the pizza principles in line, and remarkably, they've included all these different flavors, all these different types of pizzas in one giant pie, and it all tastes great. I gotta say, I don't eat a lot of big pizzas. This is my first time, but you know, it might not be my last time. Does your house have bay windows? Could you fit it in through the window? No, I don't need it. I'm trying to wash my finger. Me too. I try to keep it round here. I mean, winter is coming. That sounds dark and ominous. <laughs> Janie, today we've tried three different pizzas that cost three different amounts of money. For you, which one was the best bang for your buck? The best value is definitely DeLuca's because it's $24 and you get so much food. It's also the most flavorful pizza that I've had out of all three places. Are you sure? Because the dirt road cookers, uh -huh. you also get a lot of pizza. You do get a lot of pizza, but I like the little mini ones. You like to try a bunch of little different uh -huh. ones? For me, I gotta say my favorite today, the giant eight foot pizza. Is it a good value? It's $800. Well, this is something I think you would do about once in your life. Imagine this, you get married, you have a wedding, everyone's drunk, it's the end of the night. They're hungry, that guy pulls up with his big old truck and trailer and he cooks an eight foot pizza. It's a memory for life. So for me, I have to go with the eight footer. All right, enough talk, let's do the conclusion. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. This giant cheese pizza, $5.75. That's under $6. Is that right? I'm not good with math. You're not good with math. I'm not a typical Asian, sorry. <laughs> that wasn't that tough of a math question, but... I wasn't paying attention. You know, <laughs> you're taking the tiniest bites I've ever seen. That was pretty big. Look at it. All in my mouth. That's exactly where it should be. <laughs> that's the kind of garlic that's gonna stay on your mouth for like two days afterwards. No kissing your boyfriend, girlfriend. No, either of them. I have both, and a wife, and not the first two. Oh, that's a that good one. A yeah. Do you want half? No, I want my own piece. So I got some my classic margarita. Oh, pretty soon? Oh, not on our list. I'm not allowed. <laughs> Ivan Dro. Hey. He walked in. Yvonne Dro. Hey, my man, put her there. Can't have you back there taking pictures, unfortunately. <laughs> Yvonne Dro. Hey, hey. <laughs> Boom, guys, so that is our video for today. A huge thank you to Janie. Can I have an awkward handshake, please? Uh, we gotta do a better handshake than that. No, no, that was it. You can follow Janie on her Instagram page right here is where you should go to learn more about her and follow her on her fun life adventures. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Oh, peace. I say peace. Peace. Can you do a peace sign? Okay. Am okay. I supposed to like... Okay, no, that's it. I gotta go. I'm very busy. All right, bye. Take care.